Hello everyone, welcome to Mark Absalon's Video Tips and Tricks. I'm Mark Absalon, as you know, and a lot of you guys have the traditional work lights for lighting your video because you're on a budget, you don't have much money to spend, but you want your videos to look good by lighting your subject, which of course you want to do. Well, what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to take these work lights from tube tape and put adjustable barn doors on it. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do that and give you the supply list that you need and the difficulty level right when we get back. Well, I know some of you guys, your eyes are just bulging out of your head right now seeing barn doors on a work light. Well, if you've kept up with my forums and you've seen me on other forum uh, video sites posting, I've actually put pictures of this along with uh, a second version that I'm working on too. Well, we should talk about the difficulty of creating these. Your difficulty level on this is from a scale of one to 10, one being the easiest and 10 being very complex and difficult, is gonna be about a five. So it's a medium build and you can normally do it in about an hour and a half or an hour or to some people it might be two hours. Now, before we begin, we're gonna need to talk about our supply list and our tools. So let's do that right now. These are the items that you're going to need to actually create your barn doors. You will need four cabinet Liberty hinges. They come in two in a pack. There's a tension on this hinge because it's self-closing and we're gonna use this tension to allow us to adjust our barn doors. The pack also comes with some screws too. Now hang on to the screws because you might wanna use those rather than this other method that I'm gonna show you. You will also need 16 number six 3 8 machine screws, a pack of number eight washers, four number four one fourth of an inch machine screws. Now these aren't necessary, but it's good to have them and you'll find out that here in a second. You will also need either a 12 inch by 24 inch uh, mill aluminum sheet. There are two different types of aluminum that you can use for this build you can use a thicker type or a thinner type. The thicker type, which is 0, 3, uh, 2 in its thickness, that type uh, comes in, I think it's 6 uh, inches by 18 inch sheets, but it is a lot more expensive. On the other hand, you can use the cheaper stuff, which comes in sheets of 12 inches by 24, but its thickness is uh, 0 0.019 nine so it bends a little easier now you can just use a sheet metal for this a thin sheet metal but i prefer the aluminum and the reason i prefer the aluminum is because aluminum is lighter than steel therefore it's not going to put as much uh weight on the hinge which is good because if you put a lot of weight on the hinge it might start drooping and you don't want it to do that you will need high temperature paint for this build. It's normally called grill paint. It goes up to 1200 degrees and it actually is awesome for these lights because it will take the heat that they put off. Now make sure you get black. You want black because black is non-reflective. Of course, it absorbs light, uh, which is something that you want rather than having them not painted because if you don't paint the lights or you paint them a light color, what you're gonna see is you're gonna have a lot of light spill and you don't want that from your barn doors. All right, let's talk about the tools because you gotta have the tools to put this together because if you don't have the tools, it's not gonna work because your supplies aren't just gonna build your barn door by itself now, are they? Okay, for the tools that you need for this build, you will need metal cutting shears. These can be found at any hardware store. You will also need a Phillips nose and a flat nose screwdriver, sandpaper, coarse and a fine grit. It doesn't matter whether it's metal made for metal or not. You just need to get those sharp edges off. Another thing that would be good to have is a file. Uh, you will need a drill, number four and number six drill bits. Now I think that's about uh, one eighth of an inch, but most of the time the drill bits actually have the numbers on the side. Uh, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about that. Other things that could possibly come in handy for this build is a Dremel, a little rotary tool. Uh, they're awesome for not 
knocking down the edges and smoothing things off. So you might want to consider that. Needle nose pliers, you never know when you might need them. A Sharpie, a piece of paper. You'll need a Sharpie actually to outline the design that you're going to create for the barn doors themselves. So there might be a little couple of atoms that you'll need for this project too. Now you, my friend, are ready to build your barn doors because we like to take cool stuff that's kind of cool and make it into really cool stuff that we do ourselves because we're all on a budget and we've got these work lights back here so why not do it anyway because that means an extra set of lights in our light kit that have barn doors well starting out to build what you need to do is take your hinges each of them and you will take a number four uh, drill bit and drill a hole directly in the center on top of the hinge. Now you're asking yourself, why are we doing this? Well, these are self-closing hinges. And you'll notice they close all the way, then we'll have some major problems with the glass on our light and it'll end up shattering it. So what we're doing is we're creating a buffer on top to stop this from happening. Well, once you have your hole drilled with the number four drill bit, you want to take a number four screw, uh, that's number four, uh, one fourth of an inch, or you can use the screws that came with the hinge itself. I'm going to use a number four screw because I like it to look a bit more professional. Now it's adjustable. If you want it to go out a little further, you can. But we're creating that buffer zone that we need to stop this from hitting the glass and destroying our lights. Now let's take our hinges that we've adapted to keep them from self-closing and attach them to the light. Take your first hinge and put it on the side rim of the light. Now what you'll do here is you'll go ahead and mark it in the center. Now be careful because on the inside of the rim, on the sides, there actually is a clamping mechanism that keeps the piece of glass in. Now what we want to do is we want to center this so that our screws do not hit that clamping mechanism because that would be bad because then we wouldn't have our glass in our light. We want to keep our glass if we can on the work lights. So we take our number six drill bit and drill holes in the position that we marked with the Sharpie or whatever you're marking it with and we'll go all the way through. Now we repeat this step on all the sides of the work line. Once we have that finished, we'll take one of our number six, three eighths an inch screws and we'll thread that a bit um, through the actual rim. And we do this so we actually create a thread, which is uh, something that I really recommend you do for this is create a thread. You can go with a larger drill bit where you don't have a thread, but recommend creating a thread. If you have a die set, use it because you'll need to. This is aluminum, so most of the time you can force a screw through it and it works fine. Now take two number six screws and mount your hinge on that side. Now do this for the remaining three sides too. You'll need uh, uh, six more screws to do this. Now you'll notice on the back, you might be pretty close to that clip and uh, you can't put a nut on it or a washer on the back. Well, since it's already threaded anyway, it's gonna maintain its uh, durability and not come off. So don't worry too much about it. That's why I'm saying threading this is ideal. Now we need to design our barn doors. This is the nitty gritty part of the entire setup. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a pattern that you guys can download, but what I can do is tell you how I made these and give you the dimensions so that way you can create it yourself, whether you're going to do it on a computer or uh, just hand draw it. Um, you'll need a ruler for this, of course, and a pen or pencil. Well, the top and bottom barn door that is on this assembly, uh, the base unit dimension is 16 centimeters and the top is 21.5 centimeters. Now the side length is actually 13.5 centimeters and the little flange that comes out is uh, 4.5 centimeters. As for the two side barn doors, the actual base is 12 centimeters. The top portion is 5.5 centimeters. The overall length is 12.5 centimeters. And the little flange at the base is 3.5 centimeters. And there's, it's there to allow you to actually get a really narrow slit of, uh, of light coming out for your barn doors too. Now once you got your pattern already made out and everything ready to go, go ahead and cut it out and take a Sharpie and trace your pattern 
on the aluminum sheet. Now once you've got your barn doors cut out, go ahead and take some sandpaper or a Dremel rotary tool or a file and file down those edges because the edges are gonna be sharp. With the Dremel tool, you can actually kind of round it off a bit too and you can do this with a file also. But you want to make the edges of the metal not sharp because every once in a while you'll bump into it or something and you don't wanna cut yourself open now, do you? Well, once you've done that, then go ahead and sand down the rest of the barn door. The reason to sand, we're sanding down the rest of the barn door is we're gonna be spraying this with high temperature paint. So we wanna kinda of score the aluminum or, or sheet metal or whatever you're using to uh, create the barn doors with so that the high temperature paint will adhere to the metal better. Now let's take our sanded barn doors and go over to our uh, hinges that we already have assembled on the light and line them up in the center and mark with our Sharpie where we want to drill holes so that it'll actually hold to the hinges. Now take a number six drill bit and drill through that. And what I like to do is take a number six screw and then and thread it through, but you don't have to thread it through the barn door on this part of the assembly. You can use a larger drill bit if you wanted to, so you can just put the number six screw totally through. Once you're finished with that, let's take our barn doors outside with our high temperature paint and some paper and lay the paper down and uh, we'll give a small minute coating of paint onto the barn doors. Once your first layer of paint is dry, go ahead and give it a second coat. Try to keep your coats even and not very thick. And uh, you may even want to do three coats of uh, heat resistant paint on this. But once your barn doors are totally done and dry, let's bring them back in and we can actually take our screws and screw those through and assemble our barn doors. Now the great thing about this is because the way the hinges are set up, you can kind of adjust it because we want our barn doors to actually kind of meet up so they're even. So if you're putting one on and like one of the sides is off next to the other side and it, uh, it doesn't actually close correctly, you can shift it a bit and correct and compensate for that so that uh, both of the doors meet up when they actually close. Now that you've got the entire barn door assembly created, you're good to go. Now you may notice when you plug it in, it might smoke a little bit uh, when it's excessively on for a while. But don't worry, that's gonna go away and it's not anything bad. Uh, it's just the, the paint kinda heating up a little bit. But once that happens, you shouldn't do it again and you shouldn't have any more problems with it. Now, the barn doors themselves, that uh, one thing I don't like about them, and that's why I'm working on a second version that actually will do what this one wants, is the fact when you close it, it won't actually close all the way and make it easier for portability. But it's kind of a trade-off. Cheap barn doors on your work light, you're able to direct your light and kind of focus it right in the area where you want it to be, or uh, a total floodlight off a work light. So this is a cheap and easy way to create barn doors on your work light. Now something else you can do to these lights if you wanted to, to make them even look more professional, is use your heat resistant paint and paint your entire lighting assembly along with the base and everything so it looks uh, more professional for when you take it out and use it. The glorious work light, in particular this one here from TubeTape.com, I've shown you how to put fabulous directional barn doors on it at a cheap low price because you are the budget conscious consumer and you want pro looking stuff so that you can make your videos look better. Go over to markapsalon.com. Yes, right here. Check out the forums, the uh, um, reviews, etc, etc. Email me if you have any questions. Also check out my training DVDs. You get a lot of information from this, right? Well, you will get even more information from the training DVDs. It's like the hallelujah of a video. You will love it. And I know a lot of you guys want to support me. I get people all the time emailing me saying, how can I support you? How can I support you? Well, you can get your friends to subscribe to this channel. And uh, there are other ways that you can support me too that will help me pay for these videos. And I think you guys know what they are. Uh, also, one last thing before I go here. If you tune out now, you're going to regret it. The fact is we're doing a contest. It's a subscriber-based contest, and we're giving away fabulous prizes every 10,000 subscribers, and we're giving away two people that subscribe to this channel, along with people that comment on the videos, 
and also add me on MySpace. So there's some cool stuff. The next uh, set after we reach 20,000 at 30,000, we're going to be uh, giving away software and uh, it totals in value to over a thousand dollars so you'll be getting some really cool stuff if you win uh, at 30,000. 20,000 we're giving away a whole bunch of green screens so if you're wanting a green screen definitely subscribe because subscribing is how you enter. Well anyway guys I'm Mark Absalon I'm gonna get out of here because it's hot with all my lights I have I, I, I have so many lights after doing this, it's like I, I collect lights like old women collect cats. I mean, or dogs or whatever. I mean, just, I got so many of them. It's like killing me with their heat. And I'm going to go lay down.